Hi everyone and uh, welcome to a new webinar by Katenda. Uh, today it's a bit of a, a specific one I would say or a special one. Um, I'm your host today Julien Benoit, head of uh, customer success at Katenda and I will introduce to you a new product called the Katenda BOS or Katenda Building Operating System um, as a, a new tool to allow you to operate your, your building in a smart building. Uh, we will be together for 20, 25 minutes and uh, let's, let's uh, get started. So, Katenda BOS, Katenda BOS, Building Operating System, Beam to Ops, whatever you like. What are we trying to achieve here? We built a system that uh, is a hub for various, uh, various systems to be connected together. The intention of uh, this tool is not to replace any specialist tool, any dedicated tool that are, that are uh, already on the market now. It's more to have an interface for users of uh, buildings. So this tool is intended uh, to be available for non-specialist and building users so they can have access to more information about their, their building they're using and provide more value by providing feedbacks on the status of the building of the building if something is broken they can report it and they can also interact with smart buildings so i will cover this more in details uh, in a demo but now i just want to give you an overview of what we built here so at the core of the system as katenda bos that's uh, collecting uh, various other systems it allows you to grab uh, technical data on your equipments in your building. You can also store um, basic documents, I would say, and as-built documents. So you can still access them easily. There's also an internal uh, simple facility management system allowing you to make uh, tickets. So you have an issue in the building, you can declare an issue and someone can take care of it. You can plan some maintenance, but if you have someone in charge of the maintenance that has a professional tool to do that, there's an API so we can connect with these guys. So every information you will put into Katenda BOS will go to the system and back. Also, you will explore your assets so you will be able to view your building and your models in 3D and in 2D and, and explore it either from your computer and mostly for the users. This will be available for you on your smartphone using your, our interface. Smart buildings and connectivity. You be, you'll be able to connect your building maintenance system or management systems, uh, sorry, in, in this area, thanks to an API connection and also IoT devices. That's the strength here is we are able to connect both uh, existing systems, I would say, and also new system related to IoT devices. Of course, when you have connected buildings, you can gather information from these buildings and gather energy consumption data. So we have an area where we can store and display what's going on in the building around, around energies and also some services. So it's, uh, uh, remember that it's the fresh product. So it's a new stuff. We have implemented a first service that is a meeting, uh, meeting room booking, uh, booking service. That relies on the connection with the, uh, with your internal calendars, either G Suite or Google or Outlook. So that's the intention here. Easy to use, easy access, simple for users to access and to use it. So how do we do that? We rely, as everything we do at Catenda, we rely on open standards. So we will use IFC models that uh, the client will, will provide and Thanks to Catenda BOS, we will use these IFC models to build three main things. First, we will keep the spatial references from your models and your project. So we will store and organize things around buildings, stories, eventually zones, if you have some, and rooms. That's the granularity we will use. Also about the equipment, we will use a classification you had set on your equipments and organize the connection between equipments 
and special references. So we have an engine built in that will associate rooms and equipment with some filtering based on the classification and also based on the geometry. So any room, any shape of room will know what equipment is associated to it. And this will be available in a viewer, either 3D or 2D for you to use on your computer via your browser. So it's a SaaS service, no need to install anything, no need to powerful machine, and it can work on any modern browser. So here you have a view, a schematic view of how it works on the smart building level. So at the bottom of this uh, image, you see the equipments level, and this level, this this equipments can be regular devices and subsystems, or also IoT devices. So the requirements for for Catenda BOS to work is that these systems are talking into uh, to a supervisor. And these supervisors uh, gather data from these equipments and send also data to them, thanks to a connection with the web interface. And now that this data goes to the web with the services and security all in place, we connect to this and we are able to gather this data and display it uh, on your screens. So we have basically three layers, the equipment level in the buildings, the infrastructure level, which uh, is the supervisor and connectivity, and then the service we provide with the uh, Catenda BOS. So as you can see, we can handle in uh, in this platform several several sites and several buildings. So what are the basic requirements? So we tried and we wanted to have it very simple because it needs to be simple to use, simple to access, simple to implement. So the basic, uh, the requirements are quite basic, I would say. So we need from you IFC models. We use open standards, so it's all based on IFC, either 2x3 or 4. And these models need to have uh, some, some rules in place and consistency, and also need to include uh, spaces, because that's the granularity we use to make association between equipment and spatial reference. Also, we will uh, ask for uniform at two classification on objects. So every equipment will be uh, filled with the IFC classification uh, code. So we know uh, how to filter them in the user interface, and it will get you will you will understand this more in in the demo. And for the connection with the building management system, we had there's no open standard in this area, so we had to make a choice, and we we chose the Niagara framework, which is uh, in, implemented in quite a lot of a lot of buildings. So, uh, if we if you have a, an existing building or new building coming up with uh, this kind of equipment and Niagara compliant equipments, we can connect uh, Catenda BOS to it. And also, it's especially relevant on on existing buildings. You can equip an existing building with IoT devices. And any IoT devices that is available with an open API, we can connect to it after some some uh, interaction in, in the environment. So let me show you now live how it works. So as I said, it works in your browser. It's a SaaS platform, so you access it with an account and it's available in uh, in some languages already today. Uh, so let me show you a demo environment. And as you will see in this in this demonstration, there's uh, several uh, flowers, uh, fl not flowers, uh, flavors. Sorry, <laughs> uh, on on uh, Catenda BOS, so we can implement it um, for a client that is a specific need. We can implement a new uh, environment just for that client in a way. So you will see in my uh, later on in the demo that I use uh, existing connecting buildings to show you some areas, and you will see that the coloring and all is a bit uh, slightly different. So when you connect to your project, you land on a dashboard that gives you an overview on what's going on and the latest uh, events, uh, I would say. And of course, this is a demo here, so you're missing some some parts, especially on the energy. There's no real building connecting to that example. On the left-hand side, you have uh, the main features and uh, tools available. 
and I will cover some of those here and then the rest will be in another environment. So first, what is my building? It's the area where you access your model information. So when you activate this part, you will see your model and, and project being displayed in the 3D viewer. And you will see here that uh, the project is broken down into floors and each floor contains a set of traits and categories that you can activate or deactivate. So I will give you an example just on the ground floor. I will zoom in here and you can activate or deactivate all the um, categories and then all of a sudden you see that the viewer populates with a bunch of things and you have also the rooms available so you can activate or deactivate your rooms. Also everything here is available in a 2D view so it's sometimes better to orient yourself and uh, if you need to see more clearly what you're what you're looking at you can select a room and isolate it in in the in the three viewer as well so it's sometimes more convenient to do so so you can isolate things so let's go back to the main view so as you can see it's all interactive in your browser it's uh, based on menus and uh, let me go to room so i can show you how it works when you're on site so you see i orient myself uh, thanks to the little map in the 2D view. And now I will be able to orient myself here. And as you can see, uh, some elements are missing. It's on purpose because we, we decided that we can't, it's, it's not always worth it to display ceilings because then everything behind the ceiling will be hidden. But still, you have the option to display the ceilings. And it's the same with the uh, facilities and uh, utilities and, and all networks you can activate them so you have we have the capacity to display them but sometimes it's not exactly relevant you're more interested into uh, the terminals um, so when you select an object like in its for instance here this light you have an identity panel on the right hand side that gives you some basic information about this object and mostly you know the name here and the ground floor so you know the association with the level uh, of course you have some uh, nerdy information even available here so you have an issue management so you can declare something that something is not right and you can see if there's any uh, preventive maintenance plan on this kind of object you have a reminder of the uniformat 2 classification for this object and this is where you will access uh, data sheets and uh, technical information. So once you select an object, you can click here and you will access uh, the documents that are attached to it. And it's the same for this uh, supply diffuser, diffuser, sorry. And then you have, again, you have this little uh, access to this, uh, to these documents. So the purpose here of this tool is to either use it on the computer like I'm showing you now and later on in this uh, presentation I will show you how to it's supposed to be used in the building from the users via a QR code uh, that could be applied either on objects or in rooms so the purpose is that you have you're somewhere in the building and then you have a small QR code on the floor on the wall sorry and you scan it with your phone and then you have like a remote controller showing up that allows you to do the exact same thing as here. So declare when something is not right and see uh, if there's any documents attached to, to these objects. So let's say I want to say, uh, yeah, something is wrong. This light is off, it doesn't work. So I will use this tool here to say there's an issue. We have a preset of uh, categories. So it's about electricity and lighting anomaly. Yeah, something is wrong. So you put some details, eventually you can attach a document or a photo. Then you say, okay, we've taken your intervention into account. So where does it go? So now we have to go to a different area. So you see here we have issue and maintenance. So the two here are based again on an open standard so it's using the bcf standard to communicate and if you have an external system it will also use the bcf standard to communicate with an external uh, system 
So in the issue management here, you will find all the issues that are open. So it's a ticket that someone said, okay, something is broken, something doesn't work or is off, please get uh, to fix it. So you can filter that, you can have different, yeah, you can tag it by categories. Let's say electricity, so then there's one here and uh, you can have them all. So the purpose of this area here is to allow you to, as a maintenance uh, person, let's say, you can display the result of all these tickets in a 3D view. So here you will have color code view, so everything that is red has uh, something going on on it. And you will see here on the map that there's a small um, tag that allows you to jump right away on the location and select the object. So it's quite handy, it's supposed to be easy to use. So you see these little tags, you click on it. Oh, there's something on going on with this guy. So what it is, what is it? Okay, that doesn't work. I have a screenshot eventually. I can add uh, some comments and ask for more information. And I can change if I am in charge of the maintenance, I can change the status and say, okay, uh, I'm uh, taking it into account. And then you can jump from one to another. So it's it's really to help people to maintain their building in, in a good shape. It's really the intention here. So you can see what's going on, what's on, what's uh, been set and correctly uh, done. So you can have a follow up and easy access to that. Same for the maintenance. It's a, a, an area where you get information from the maintenance services that something will happen. So there's one here that is around elevator. There's an annual maintenance that has to be done at the end of December and they have to comply with all this uh, checklist. And if you want to know where it is, you can display the result again in 3D and you can see, okay, here it is. You have this little tag you can click on and you see that this is this elevator that will be, uh, uh, there will be an intervention on it at, at the end of the year. Uh, another area that is interesting and can be helpful for users in the my building uh, area is the small search engine that we have based on uh, the room names. So if you type here an IC room, an IC space or room name, you can find the list and then when you click on it, it will be selected in the viewer and available also on, on the map. So you can easily find so the purpose of this tool is that when someone from the outside of the building wants to come and find either someone or an area where it has to work, you're able to find it easily here, either on your tablet, smartphone or, or computer. And yeah, lastly, on this environment, I will show you the, the document area so you can store here. It's it's uh, basic stuff, nothing fancy here. It's just a storage for your as-built documentation. Uh, it could be either as-built documents, uh, oper operation and maintenance document, and also procedures. So you, you can store uh, files here and you can display them and access them in the in the browser and see what's, uh, what you need to do with, uh, with some stuff here. So before I go to the uh, connected building area and everything that is in connection with a smart building and data there, I will just show you the preview of uh, uh, the management area. So we have uh, called it management where you can select users, project models and so, and so forth. And there's a, a data sheet area. So the intention here is to easily associate equipments based on the type or the uh, equipment name or the classification and easily associate uh, technical documentation. So every time you will click on such an object, no matter how many you have in your models, you will be available, the, the documents here will be available for you to, to display. That's the intention we have here. So now I will switch to another environment and show you how it works with the connected building and what you can do in this area. So in this um, section, I have to jump to a different environment so I can uh, demonstrate the capabilities um, of our tool uh, regarding uh, smart buildings and 
connected buildings because obviously to make a demo I need a real building to be connected to. So I will use two examples. Uh, the first one will be to demonstrate the capacities around connectivity with the building and the existing systems. So if I go here in this part called connected building in English, you see that you get again the viewer with a 3D model and you can activate per level and you see here different areas. You can switch on and off the, the visibility for the architecture. And every topic here concern uh, is, is around uh, lighting, opening, temperature and occupancy. That's the starting point for us. Maybe later on we will add uh, some new um, domains. Uh, so as you can see, the viewer is uh, contextualized. So now lighting, you can uh, click on the room and connect and see whether uh, the light is on and the inference information about uh, what's going on in this room. If you switch to another one, you can see uh, opening sensors. So you different different colors on the openings and gives you a different status. So when it's green, it's like closed. And when the color is yellow, it's uh, open. You also have, depending on your sensors, here we have a temperature sensor, so we can see uh, room temperatures and we have a color code from, from cold temperatures to, to hot temperatures that gives you a visual indication on, on the status. And also you have uh, occupancy sensor, so to know if uh, someone is, is uh, using the room or, or not. So when you select a room, as you can see, you get um, almost all the possibilities that we have as for now in the tool. You can have uh, CO2 sensors um, detecting if people are in or not, so you can say it's, it's busy or not. You can have humidity sensors, uh, control on the different equipments you have here, and you also have uh, the ability that's, that's not shown here to activate or deactivate uh, shades, for instance, on, on openings. So, of course, uh, keep in mind that everything here depends on what is connected in the actual building. So you need to have equipment able to communicate with uh, um, a system that will collect information about the systems and communicate with the outer world via internet. So that's uh, key here. So it could be IoT devices or regular system that you can find in buildings these systems must be able to communicate with the uh, Niagara 4 protocol supervisor. And the next part about uh, building connectivity is uh, not only about connected building, but about energy consumption and uh, services. So if I go, let let's me cover consumption and I will go to services afterwards. So I jump to another area where I need to go to have real data again, so you can see how it works on a running building. So here you will get information about the uh, uh, hair supply, like uh, flow and power on, on supply and return for, for uh, ventilation and air cooling systems. So everything, you have the actual status on the objects, on the element, you have the supply for the flow, return also, and energy consumption for that. And then you can sort by buildings, so if you have several buildings on one side, you can switch to one to another. And then also uh, you can switch for a level in particular. So again, keep in mind that every data we have, we have here is um, from the building with uh, sensors on, on the counters. So the counters that uh, counts electricity consumption or hot water consumption are able to communicate with a supervisor and then Catenda BOS is connected to this supervisor. If your counters are not connected, you will not be able to get to get this data. Yeah, so you see what you can do with the energy consumption. And lastly, I will talk about the services. So it's a first also step. Uh, we can add more in along the way. Uh, 
we added a, a possibility of booking meeting rooms. So you have also the viewer here. You can find your meeting room per level and uh, you see, depending on the code of the color, if the rooms are free or not at the moment, because it's based on the uh, occupation sensor, is there someone in the room or not? And if you select a room, if you go to the side panel, you will see the, uh, the the agenda for this room today, and you can have an express meeting if you if you want. So you can just click on a button and make a short reservation. And the purpose of this is also to have you you there's a possibility to have a small device that you in, in, install on the wall uh, outside of the room that will display the exact same information here. And I have a. A short video after that that uh, will show you uh, how it works when you're using uh, this tool on on um, your mobile phone so here it is you are on your mobile you open your camera and you can uh, scan a QR code that will lead you to the tool with the kind of a remote view and on this remote view you have three possi four possibilities sorry you can make a new um, request for uh, maintenance so you say okay something is wrong this uh, heater doesn't work it's too cold and it goes into the system you can also access the connectivity for your smart building so interact with the systems and temperature light and get some information about this and you can also if this room is a meeting room you can book the room check the status check the the agenda for the day and interact with the, this uh, this environment so you can uh, book a meeting room here and also with the last possibility with a small target uh, you can orient yourself in the building so you can see where what floor you are you can see in 3d where you're located on this building and you have the 2d view as well to see like a little map of uh, where your your room is located and also of course you have the basics information on this room available so that's it for today. I hope you enjoy your you enjoy your time here and you you got to know better what Katenda BOS is as a product and uh, the intention we have with it. Please uh, get in touch if you have questions. Uh, contact us either at sales at katenda.no or myself Julien Benoit at katenda.no. Reach out to us on the social medias and uh, we'll see you soon. Have a nice day.